But though the doctor tried hard and never ceased trying to get Charles Darnay set at liberty, or at least get him brought to trial, the public current of the time set too strong and fast for him. The new era began. The king was tried, doomed, and beheaded. The Republic of Liberty, Quality, Fraternity, or Death declared for victory or death against the world in arms. The black flag waved night and day from the great towers of Notre Dame. Three hundred thousand men, summoned to rise against the tyrants of the earth, rose from all the varying soils of France as if the dragon's teeth had been sown broadcast, and it yielded fruit equally on hill and plain, on rock and gravel and alluvial mud, under the bright sky of the south and under the clouds of the north, in fell and forest, in the vineyards and the olive grounds, and among the cropped grass and the stubble of the corn, along with the fruitful banks of the broad rivers and in the sand of the seashore. What private solicitude could rear itself against the deluge of the year one of liberty, the deluge rising from below, not falling from above, and with the windows of heaven shut, not open? All right, so here there, there are so many, it says 400,000 men all over France have risen up to um, participate in this kind of mass rioting this and mass murder of people all throughout um all throughout france picking it up with there was there was no pause no pity no peace no interval of relenting rest no measurement of time though days and nights circled as regularly as when time was young and the evening and morning were the first day other count of time there was none hold of it was lost in the raging fever of a nation as it is in the fever of one patient. Now, breaking the unnatural silence of a whole city, the exec executioner showed the people the head of the king, and now it seemed to be ancient usage before there were many weeks old. Above all, one hideous figure grew as familiar as if it had been before the general gaze from the foundations of the world. The figure of the sharp female called la guillotine it was the popular theme for jest it was the best cure for a headache it's infallibly prevented the hair from turning gray it imparted a peculiar delicacy to the complexion it was the national razor which shaved close who kissed la guillotine looked through the little window and sneezed into the sack it was the sign of the regeneration of the human race it superseded the cross models of it were worn on breast from which the cross was discarded and it was bowed down to and believed in where the cross was denied all right i really want to look at this paragraph a little bit because it's um it, it really says something about human nature um so let's kind of break down this paragraph it was the popular theme for jest okay a jest is a joke so it was the best cure for a headache because it took your head it prevented your hair from turning gray because it killed you before you got old it imparted a peculiar delicacy to the complexion this one you got to think about a little bit more it was believed that okay so when your head got chopped off by the guillotine your head would roll into it and they would hold your head up and most of the time there would be a flush in the cheeks that's because all of the blood that's left in the brain and the skull would kind of come up to the cheeks and it looked um some of the time they said that it was proof of guilt because it showed shame in those who had been killed. Um, it was the national rager which shaved close, like so close it just cut your head off. Um, and then if we go down, it superseded the cross. One of the things that the French did after um, killing the aristocrats was to kind of shut down religion remembering that from early days when we were reading this when we talked about the first second and third estate so the first estate is the clergy and the second estate is the aristocracy the third estate is the common people the first and second estates are very um closely intertwined um and so the fact that the clergy was considered and was rather corrupt during that time period one of the things that the revolutionaries did was embrace atheism they basically made it you couldn't 
believe in God. You could not be Christian. That was one of the things that they took away. And so, whereas the people used to wear crosses around their necks or a cross brooch or something along those lines, instead it was replaced by a miniature little guillotine. They would uh, sell dolls and earrings and necklaces and all this kind of stuff at the, um, at the beheadings. So that's where that's had. So picking up at it sheared off. It sheared off heads so many that it and the ground it most polluted were a rotten red. It was taken to pieces like a toy puzzle for young devil and was put together again when the occasion wanted it. Just a little bit of extra info. They would take it apart every night and then put it back together because it would block streets. So they only built it up when it was needed. And there were these little slats down in the um, pavement that they would set the feet of the guillotine uh, platform on. And there are places in Paris still where you can see um, where those little slats in the ground, they're still there. So you can go see where the revolutionaries killed a bunch of folks. It hushed the eloquent, struck down the powerful, abolished the beautiful and good. 22 friends of high public mark, 21 living and one dead. It had lopped the heads off in one morning in as many minutes. The name of the strong man of old scripture had descended to the chief functionary who worked it, but so armed he was stronger than his namesake and blinder, and tore away the gates of God's own temple every day. Among these tares in the brood belonging to them, the doctor walked with a steady head, confident in his power, cautiously persistent in his end, never doubting that he would save Lucy's husband at last. Yet the current of the time swept by so strong and deep and carried the time away so fiercely that Charles had lain in prison one year and three months when the doctor was thus steady and confident. So it's been a year and three months since Charles set foot in France. So much more wicked and distracted had the revolution grown in that December month that the rivers of the south were encumbered with the bodies of the violently drowned by night, and prisoners were shot in lines and squares under the southern wintry sun. Still the doctor walked among the terrors with a steady head. No man better known than he in Paris at that day, no man in stranger situations, silent, humane, indispensable, in hospital and prison, Using his art equally among assassins and victims, he was a man apart. In the exercise of this skill, the appearance and the story of the Bastille captive removed him from all other men. He was not suspected or brought in question any more than if he had indeed been recalled to life some 18 years before or were a spirit moving among the mortals. End of chapter 4.